Greetings Captains, this is Ophelia Marauder back at you with another video. Today we're going to be going over some of the best ships to play this summer. Right now in the meta there's a lot of ships that have kind of switched their way out or moved up or you know right now they're still doing pretty good as longtime performers. And today we're going to talk about a lot of these ships, destroyers, cruisers, battleships, and carriers respectively, and which ones are doing really well right now and ships you should either pick up ships you should be playing or ships you could should grind to get uh we're going to start off right now with destroyers so uh to kick it off kitakaze right now is a phenomenal dd i love this ship i think it's really fun to spam with it's one of my first destroyers that i was a gunboat that i got cracking in i love it it's great at taking really good positions it's great at being aggressive and using cover properly I love this boat, and by extension, I love my Haragumo. It's another good ship, and it does the exact same thing, but with an extra turret. Pretty good AA for a destroyer as well, due to the dual purpose bounce. Has a torpedo reload booster. I love it, just the same as my Kitakaze. Uh, next is Hill. Hill is a very fun gun build destroyer when you build it for guns over torpedoes. And I love doing this because you can really get aggressive with it and win gunfights against ships that are not expecting it. The gun performance is really good and I love the general utility that she brings to a team, especially in division. Um, my next ship that I love to play is Sims. And Sims uses actually my same captain as my hill with a really crazy gun build, which is, you can see here on the screen for my, uh, for my sims it shares the same captain as des moines and this build allows me to do a bunch of really crazy stuff against enemy dds allows me to get aggressive it allows me to hit uh battleships really hard over islands that is um my sims win weight was a 23 percent when i played it like a torp boat and then i switched to guns and i've just been going crazy and getting wins with it i think it's a ship you too should be interested in playing because it's definitely as an older ship in the game something people underestimate and don't really expect to do well but man you can really make this ship sing uh next ship i have up is fletcher um fletcher is a ship i've played a lot of in ranked not so much have i've played it in uh randoms a lot but Right has been where the ship shines for me. I love it. I love the torp ability on it. I love the gun layout and how easy and fluid those are. I like the AA that it brings as well. If you're getting harassed by a destroyer, it's really nice to be able to tell it to go away. So, um, sorry, a carrier. Apologies, not a destroyer. Uh, destroyers don't fly. But I love it. It's great. Uh, Fletcher is a really good torp boat for you to pick up. Next is the Sherman. And Sherman 2 shares the same captain that Sims and Hill does. Uh, the SAP is really good on this ship. I love it. I love the um, the gun placement too because I can kind of be a little more angled back to an enemy and still have that gun play. Uh, the fixed mount torpedo launchers are not really that big of a deal. As, as you're approaching an enemy, you can pretty much get them off as long as you're um, stealth enough with it. And people aren't really expecting those single launch torps anyway. Uh, the AA is great. I love the Hydro on this boat. Truly just an awesome ship to play. It's available for coal at Tier 10, so do not hesitate to pick it up. Next ship I have is my new Strashimi. I love the new Strashimi. Uh, another ship that I've played extensively and ranked more so than randoms. New Strashimi has, and as we'll see here, a phenomenal consumable lineup with it has having smoke, defensive fire, a heal, and having an engine boost. And this just gives you so much flexibility. I love building it for Torps and just beating the crap out of people with them. The guns are really good to follow up with. So once again, Nushishimi, just a phenomenal ship to pick up. Once again, another ship for coal. So if you have the coal and you're looking for a good tier 9 destroyer and you like playing uh, Torp boats, this is not a bad ship to get. If you have a high tier captain like I do on uh, my Kremlin, I put them on my DD because the skills obviously don't collide. So I can then have that good high level captain on the ship and train my Kremlin captain on a DD by just gaining points and vice versa with playing Kremlin to level up the DD skills. So at the end of the day, I just love doing this and I love playing New Shishimi. Very fun boat right now to play with. Next ship is Tashkent. Tashkent actually just recently got a buff where she got lowered in the water so she's harder to hit. 
And with her high speed that she has of 42 and a half knots and a very good turning circle and rudder shift time for a gunboat destroyer of this particular size and design, um, it's really good. I love the uh, heel on this ship. It makes, keeps you very durable. And your gunplay is just great. Love surprising people with that. I love the three racks of torps. And the torpedoes are an 8 kilometer torp, so it's not too long. You do have to be in radar range to use them at this tier. And people really aren't just expecting them, but they hit really hard. And I love it when I'm torping a smoke running away because someone surprised me and I hit them in it. And Tashkin just gives you that kind of awesome, awesome feeling. Uh, next ship is Z44. This is a ship that all my friends play a lot. I have not played a lot before from what I hear with them. They love playing it for the torps. And they enjoy just getting in really, really um, ambushy situations with it. Where they're able to ambush silently. So kind of just, you know, uh, kind of like a, a rogue play style. If you've ever played a game that's, you know, got dungeons and dragons in it and whatnot. But they like playing with this kind of rogue play style where they can torp out no one can see them and they're getting hits all the time with it and people love that for it the guns are good for self-defense so you're not getting pushed too hard c44 is a good ship from what i hear from everyone and all the people who i know who play this boat have a 50 percent win rate or higher in it and a pretty great damage level on it so by extension i believe that right now this is a ship that a lot of people can perform well in uh next ship i have on my list here is J jaguar uh, Jaguar is kind of like a mini Kleber at tier 5. And at tier 5, there's not a lot of people who may understand how this ship works. So you're really able to get really aggressive with it and play really well with this ship. I love it. I love getting in there close. I love rush torp rushing battleships that are badly out of position and are unaware. I like being able to use this ship's speed to be able to throw my weight around and look around the map and do that early spotting. I love it. Jaguar is a good ship. And by extension... Kleber being the bigger version of Jaguar, as you can see. Uh, Kleber is such a strong boat that it was used a lot in the last Clan War season, and Wargaming decided to pull it from the upcoming Clan War season because of its power in Clan Wars. Um, this is just a very fun boat. I love it. It's got good guns. It's got good speed. The torps hit hard. The legendary mod is insane if you want to play the legendary mod. So overall... Love playing with this ship. And the same thing goes for Marceau um, in terms of how much I love it. I love being able to run around and boom and zoom with Marceau. I like how I can take really scrappy fights with enemy destroyers with this. The torp strength is just as good. And you have a lot of speed with this ship, which is actually faster than Kleber. So you're able to run away from situations that are harmful for, for you a little bit quicker and able to take advantage of enemies out of position and get to them before they get back into position. And Marceau has this strength. Love playing it. And in the meta right now, um, as it always has been in the meta, this game is about punishing mistakes as much as you can. And Marceau is a good extension of that. Um, next ship that I really like to play is Leone. So Leone is the tier 6 Italian premium destroyer, as you can see here. And I really like playing Leone because the torps on it, People don't expect, and when you hit them, it hurts real bad. Uh, you also get eight guns. You have a turret here, a turret here, a turret here, and a turret here. And you may not think that, you know, hey, if it has all these guns, then why would it be a torp boat? Well, the torps on this thing are 12 kilometers, and they're 54 knots, which is a little slow. But people aren't expecting them. They just appear out of nowhere and hit other people. And the guns are really good for self-defense, and it gets American smoke. So it gets a super long duration smoke. I love it. I love being able to smoke up teammates with it or using it to break line of sight and then go spot so that my um, teammates are able just to fight uncontested. So once again, a really good ship. And then Vaistress. Vaistress is really good at the boom and zoom. Um, as you saw there real quick, 10 knots, 80, uh, sorry, 86 knot, yeah, 68 knots, 10 kilometer torps. I love this boat. I love being able to plink away and get hits with it. It has a heel, which is nice, too. I um, also love this camo scheme. Not going to lie, one of the best camo schemes, I think, in the game because it has the neutrality stripes from Sweden during the interwar period and during World War II. But I 
love this ship. I think it's fun to play, and it's really just comfortable right now to learn DD on if you're interested in playing torp boats and you're having issues with Japanese DDs or any other torp boat line and you're looking for a different alternative. This is a ship that makes it a little bit easier for you to kind of learn the torpedo boat play style. So um, I think Vastrus is a good ship for anyone to have in their port. And then all these DDs here you see marked as primary are just good ships in general that if you have them in your port and you play them and you play them during the summer and you play them during your buddies that you're going to have a really fun time with. Um, all these ships on here are either uh, purchasable, in the case of Hill, Sims, and Leone, for uh, real life money, cash obviously, and uh, all the other destroyers on this list are uh, the with the premiums, the Sherman, Nishishimi, Z44, and Marceau, are available for coal. So if you're looking for a ship like that, um, to spend your coal on these are all good pickups and sherman and marceau are both good in clan wars uh haragumo depends on your uh lineup of your on your team but for sherman and marceau if you're looking for a coal purchase that's also going to benefit your ability to play clan wars this is a really good option to pick up all right so for cruisers uh these are ships that i love a lot and i just really appreciate playing i'm a cruiser main at heart so these are just in general ships i love but also these are ships right now that i notice are really great in the current uh, meta of the game uh first goes up is myoko and i don't have her here in this as pictured here in, in the best states of prime and powder but i have plenty of her uh sisters that are built up and there's plenty of myoko clones in this game uh myoko is just a fun fun cruiser to play it's got really strong guns it's got a good turning circle its torps are easier to use than other japanese cruisers in the tech tree i like it i find it really fun to play it's got good concealment the he is very powerful phenomenal ship overall just like the otago otago is one of the oldest ships in the game and it continues to outperform practically a majority of the field of the tier 8 cruisers it's just insane how time tested this ship has been um there's not a single person i've ever recommended a tago to who bought it and then told me they did not like it it is a great pickup very strong great torp angles great guns has a heel gets access to hydro or defensive fire so you can be adaptable to whatever division you're playing in it can share a captain with any of the Japanese cruisers and be just fine. It's phenomenal. I love this boat. And it's something you should play as well. Uh, for low tiers, if you're looking to have a little fun though, St. Louis is a good pick. Uh, I have done, admittedly, my shameful fair share of still clubbing as as everyone else in the game. And I find St. Louis to be just a phenomenal uh, ship for you to be able to play. I like it. I think it's super fun because of the guns, because of the armor, because of uh, the concealment on it When if you were to build into it. Admittedly, I got a 12-point seal club and captain on this thing, but still, just a super fun ship. If you and your buddies are looking to have some low-tier fun, crack out your St. Louis's. By extension, if you don't have them, Chester is a premium tier, uh, tier 3, which is a copy of St. Louis. Play that as well if your buddies have it, but very fun ship to play just if you want to blow off some steam. Um, Atlanta, and as per uh, the theme of this uh, video, I have a nice little summertime camouflage on it. Uh, Atlanta is a very fun uh, cruiser. I enjoy this ship thoroughly. It's what it was the first ship that gave way to the light HE spamming cruiser playstyle, and it's a ship that I think more a lot of people should just still have in their ports, almost like standard equipment. Um, it's available in the premium shop just like a Tago and phenomenal boat. If you're trying to train a Wooster captain, this is the best thing to train a Wooster captain in because they will share pretty much the same skills. Uh, next ship is Des Moines. I love the Des Moines. It's phenomenal. It's one of my favorite uh, tier 10s in the whole game. Des Moines got a good reload, good shells. Great ballistic silver items. You can run range mod, reload, or legendary mod in this thing in the last slot and not have a bad time with either of them. I have mine with radar, hydro, and radio location on it, and I just kick butt. 
It's a great ship. And I think more people should play it. Even though pretty much a lot of people play it, you should play it even more because it's just that good. And the super ship variant of this Annapolis that's come that uh, just got into the game formally is also very good as well. So if you're looking for a super ship, just try uh, Annapolis is a great pickup if you love playing the Des Moines. Next up is the Shores. Shores is a light cruiser, and its design is pretty much in the same uh, four turrets, three guns per turret kind of design. Uh, I love this thing for kiting. I love it with its spotter aircraft because I can really uh, kind of get some uh, good shots on battleships here and there and then pull back. Uh, I love it. It's got great fighter starting potential. It's pretty swift and nimble. You can hide. You can stand farther back from an island on a corner and shoot over if you're wanting to defend from a push. And then when you're playing in a more of a neutral setting or being aggressive, you can kite with it. So I love it. It's not really an island camper per se. Unlike the Atlanta, which is an island camper, but this ship is just still so fun. I also love the uh, World Warships Anniversary camo that we're getting made for it. It looks pretty sleek in this, but overall, Shores is just a great boat. Uh, next is Moskova. Moskova was a phenomenal cruiser in last season's Clan Wars. It's a phenomenal ship to pick up once again for Cole, and I love playing it. I think it's super fun. I can't tell you how many times I've just generally enjoyed playing uh, a match with my buddies in a Moskova and just doing so much damage and wrecking face with it, especially with a great uh, radar on it, a good bow armor layout on it, and great guns. Um, the HE and AP is interchangeable. As long as you don't show your broadside, man, you can have so you can do so much damage with this ship. Um, next is York. York is like a mini Hinden, uh, mini Hindenburg, and I just love this thing, man. It's compact. It turns well. It's got good AA. It's got good guns. The torps are comfortable to use at close range for knife fights. I love it. The secondaries are pretty decent, too, if you want to bum rush a destroyer and smoke with your hydro, if you're just trying to be a meme, which I like doing sometimes, which that's just me. But I love kiting with this thing primarily 90% of the time I, uh, I'm in a battle with it. I'll just kite the whole match and do stupid fires, and I'll set stupid, um, stupid amounts of damage in this thing. I, I love it. It's great. Hindenburg. Hindenburg is a phenomenal kiting cruiser. It's got good AG. It's got good AP. It's a bigger York. Um, I love it. I love the uh, bow armor on it because the bow is so thin that when you're bow on, you just miss shells. Some ships have a more flared bow because of how they're designed. This is a very skinny ship, you can see. So... Um, just great overall, though, with its armor scheme. There's, it gets the nickname Battleship Hindenburg because when built certain ways, this thing can tank an absurd amount of damage. So, personally, I just I love playing it. I have a good friend in my clan who's a Hindenburg fanatic as well. It's a great ship. Pick it up. It's very uh, usable in clan wars, and it's very good in random battles as well. Next up is Fiji. Fiji is a phenomenal cruiser. It's got a good consumable layout with having a heal, with having hydro, and having smoke, which you can interchange for ray, uh, not radar. I believe it's uh, spotter and fighter this tier. Next tier, you can exchange it for radar. But I love using it with the smoke and staying in, uh, staying in smoke with it. Um, it's good at taking out destroyers. It's good at damaging cruisers. It's good at keeping battleships back. Uh, I like its AA as well, but it's not... It's not phenomenal with the AA. It's got some Bofors and Orlikans, but I mean, I would, if I'm picking a ship for AA, I'm more inclined to pick a Minotaur at tier 10 than I am a Fiji at tier 7 if my mood of the day is to take down aircraft, but I digress. I like Fiji. I think it's a good ship to pick up and play, and it's a great one to play with your buddies as well. Some of the most fun you can have in this game. Next, Tiger 59. And a lot of people are probably losing their minds right now if you've played this game for a while. Like, why would you suggest a Tiger for summer? Well, Tiger is a Minotaur with three less turrets. And while it sounds crazy, this is actually the design variant between the Tiger and the Minotaur that the Royal Navy actually built in real life. Um, it's got what I think is just a great kit because it's got 
a heal, it has smoke, it has radar, and it has defensive fire. So you can sit in smoke and take down aircraft and then push out of the smoke and then radar something and shoot it and kill it. Uh, I love the engine on this thing. It's got a really good engine. I even though British uh, ships have great acceleration, this thing's got good acceleration even amongst all the British cruisers. So I think that's just phenomenal for it. It's got very good turning ability. It can take down aircraft very easily. Uh, people underestimate the ship a lot, so it allows you to really abuse uh, that lack of knowledge and get really good damage on ships. So I love uh, playing with this thing. And I love um, just r ripping into battleships with it. I love ripping into cruisers with it. Uh, destroyers will run once you radar with it because they don't expect it to have radar for whatever reason. So overall, just a phenomenal ship and really, really fun to play. Next is the Minotaur. Uh, I play my Minotaur smoke over radar. Uh, that's just my personal preference. But radar is also a really good pick for the ship. 10 phenomenal guns uh shreds everything very lightly armored so easy to get killed in but it just wrecks house it's a ship that gets used in clan wars depending on uh how your team has built its dynamic but for the most part you will never have a bad match in minotaur unless you're playing it wrong so if you and your buddies are looking for some uh, fun at tier 10, that's a different experience. If you've never tried a light cruiser before at tier 10, Minotaur is probably a good gateway ship to jump in on that. Next up is DeGrasse. DeGrasse is like a almost improved version of Le Glacianar in terms of how it plays in game. I love the fact that I get a catapult aircraft on here. I love that I that my guns are really uh, fluid. My torps have great angles and great uh, damage dealing capabilities. And I just love using this thing at speed boost. You can go so fast, it's crazy with it. Like you get a 15% speed boost with the, with the mod, which allows you to get 234 seconds of action time and a 90 second reload, which if you build in the, for the cooldown on this is absolutely phenomenal. So I think DeGrasse is a great ship to get. It's pretty relatively inexpensive compared to some of the compared to obviously the tier 8s and 10s in the game uh for cash uh tier 10s come around for cash every so often in the game but they're not really worth it to pay for it they're better to get with the free resources um the grass is pretty much like a uh smaller honoree but with just six inch guns instead of the uh nine nine inch guns that honoree gets uh and a ship that's pretty similar to DeGrasse, but has the heavy uh, cruiser guns is, uh, is Algerie. And this is using one of the space camouflages that you can get every so often when Wargaming throws them back into the shop. But I love this ship. It's so comfortable to play. It's very fluid to play. It just feels, it just feels really fun. Uh, the guns on this thing are great. And for a ship built in real life, it doesn't suffer from any of the... Uh, drawbacks a lot of treasy cruisers did because of how french engineers handled designing the ship so you have really good gun angles you have uh, a really fast hull the torps are in a really good position on it and the aa is not too bad it's not it's not as strong as the fiji's aa because the fiji just has a little bit better aa because of its bow four mounts but uh algeries still got so something to work with there and I just love, once again, using the French speed boost. It has the reload booster, so you can really start pumping out rounds really quickly on enemies, and that's just super fun to play with. So I really enjoy that quick, fast burst fire damage that you get on ships with it. Uh, it's a good kiter. Love playing it. And this brings us into the next ship, Bayard. Bayard is like a French Cleveland. Um... The AA is ridiculously strong on it, even though it says it's a rating of 69. No, it's got great AA. Uh, I love playing with this thing's guns. You set dumb fires on it. You get a lot of the classic French consumables, like speed boost and main battery reload booster, and you can switch between defensive fire and hydro. I normally run the ship with carriers that I play with in division, so I always keep defensive fire on this ship. But... I love this thing's gun layout. It's even got secondaries, which is kind of rare for a light cruiser that's uh, not an American one. 
to have like really good secondaries and this one does so they're really great for ambushing destroyers up close uh the torps on it are hard hitting if you catch a battleship pushing you with this thing man you'll do some serious damage and the concealment on this ship is nine six so that coupled with a 16.4 kilometer reload sorry range apologies um you can have basically like this not uh eight kilometer space uh between you and the enemy which is a lot to work with so you can get in really good ambush positions and really jump on ships that you shouldn't otherwise be able to and Bayard is just so fun for that. And on the flip side of the coin there, I also like playing Charles Martel. Martel is in kind of the same vein of being a ship once again with the engine boost and the reload, uh, defensive fire or hydro based on which one you would like. Um, I've recently reground the French um, heavy cruisers, which is why this is missing some upgrades here. But for the most part, this is such a fun boat to play. I love the guns. The AP on Charles Martel hits really hard. The HE sets good fires. It's just overall a ship that you and your buddies are truly going to enjoy playing with. Uh, if you division a Charles Martel up with a Baltimore, I I you can have so much fun doing that. So if your friend has a Baltimore and you have a Charles Martel, feel free to, to pair those two up because they're both really fun to play with. Uh, next is Brindisi, and this is the last of the cruisers that I think right now are pretty, pretty, pretty fun to play this summer. Uh, Brindisi feels super comfortable to play. It is a totally different experience than Amalfi. The SAP is great. Like, it just hits like no one's business. The torps are more long-range surprise torps. The fuel smoke, uh, when built out, allows you to just disappear and run away for as long as you'd like. There's there in my mind. There's nothing that's that that could possibly make me hate this ship. It's just a dream to play, and Venezia is a pretty awesome experience in her own right. But if you're looking for a good tier nine cruiser to play around with, because you just want something that's good for randoms, good for ranked, uh, good for just anything really, you know, trying to grind out some damage mission and co-op because you're tired and you don't have anything better to do. This is a good ship to do that with. So, for battleships, there's a lot of ones that are really good right now. Uh, Congo is one of them. This is just a fun ship to play. Great for uh, trying to carry a match with, especially at lower tiers where matches can easily end up getting thrown by your team. Congo teaches you a lot about how to play battleships. So, if you're just jumping into the game this summer, or you know, you're helping teach your buddies or you want to play something that's comfortable um, yourself this summer, Congo is a great ship to play that with. Yamato is, by extension, as the Tier 10 in that line, also just a great ship. Uh, it's got a great armor scheme. You have to be uh, careful, though, of the infamous cheek when you're, sho when you're uh, showing it to the enemy here, where shells can go through. But for the most part, the armor scheme is just phenomenal on this ship. The guns are the 18-inch guns that hit really hard. Overall, it is just so fun to play. And it's something that a lot of people who I know love playing very well. I only have a couple battles in Yamato, but I plan this summer on playing a lot more in this ship. Uh, it's the classic uh, two guns in front, one in back design. And here I have one of the uh, event camos from... Um, from high school fleet on my Yamato with a weeaboo captain because desu desu. Next up is Arizona. Arizona is a phenomenal dreadnought battleship to play at tier 6. She is the infamous Arizona that sunk at Pearl Harbor, reincarnated on the Pixel Navy. And my word is she just great to play. If you're looking for just that American Dreadnought experience, don't don't settle for Vermont right now. It's not like it's not the most comfortable experience in the in the moment. Arizona is just the better the better of the option, and you'll have so much more fun with Arizona than you would with many other ships in the game right now at tier six. Uh, great guns, good armor scheme. Love using its spotter. AA is not very good, but this is a ship that when you division up with your teammates, 
plays super well. So I recommend if you're going to div up with your buddies, playing Arizona. Uh, North Carolina is a phenomenal tier 8 battleship for the Americans. And its gun performance is great. It's hard hitting. It's got good defensive secondaries. It's got pretty good AA because of those uh, 5 inch guns on there. Overall, this thing is good at handling enemy battleships and racking up just tons of damage. It's never not been good, and it's a pretty classic ship to pick up and play. I think if you were to play North Carolina right now, you would definitely be having a fun time in game. Uh, next ship is Ohio. This is out of the Research Bureau, and man, is it worth every point. I have not yet learned this ship very well yet as my win rate, and it's not very good, but all my buddies own this ship and people just adore it to death it's a montana with a with a turret and caliber replacement of it having uh dual eight inch gun turrets instead of having uh triple 16 inch gun turrets montana is still a fun ship to play but ohio just has that smacking power that that you, you just love to have i mean you'll have that wonky dispersion here and there but for the most part every shot's gonna hit and you're going to do pretty good damage depending on what target you're aiming at. If you're aiming at like a angled Yamato, obviously you're not going to do much. But, you know, if you're aiming in the right spots on pretty much all the other battleships and all the other cruisers and whatnot, you'll get pretty good damage chunks. So this ship is a phenomenal boat to play. It's good in uh, Clan Wars as well. So if you're looking for a ship to fill that role, this is not a bad ship to reset some lines and grind if you're looking for that to do that over the summer. For the Russians, Ismail is a great tier 6 battleship. And Ismail has um, been just, I guess, glorified by many players because of the fact that you have this silly, these silly gun angles at the back here that allow you to show very little side but be able to put out a lot of damage with your ship. And it's really fun to play that way because you could just smack people with three quarters of your firepower without giving anything up the armor is good as long as you don't turn broadside obviously uh really no secondaries to speak of but the guns on this thing are very powerful and as long as you position correctly you really don't notice the limited damage control party consumable that ismail gets so it's really easy to pull a really good match in ismail uh next up is sharnhorst sharnhorst isn't bad if you build her for main guns instead of leaning into her secondaries, man, does she just smack cruisers around like no one's business and makes them cry and run it into the corner, even against tier 9 cruisers. Um, Charnhorst is really fun to play, and a lot of people I know just, they love taking her in a ranked, they love taking her into operations, they love taking her pretty much anywhere. So, if you haven't picked up a Sharnhorst, pick up a Sharnhorst. Very cheap ship, so... Uh, it's a really good uh, budget opportunity for you to kind of, you know, get a lot of bang for your buck when uh, picking up a premium. Next is the Z-10. The Z-10, despite the fact that this ship is absolutely probably one of the most ugly ships in the game, my word, does this thing hit super hard. It's got a great armor belt. It's got good guns. It has torpedoes. It gets all the beautiful consumables every battleship would love to have because it has hydro, which everybody loves having hydro on a battleship and when you have it it immediately just pushes it to another level while you do have a limited damage control party with the proper build you don't end up feeling it on this ship and it just smacks enemies around it's a very fast boat and a lot of people just love playing it next up is andrea doria i have her adorned with one of the uh, event skins for when italian battleships came out andrea doria has that sap on her she's got a really good gun play she's got good angles she's fast she's well armored her aa is very good for a self-defense capacity it's not really like it's good for telling a carrier to kind of leave you alone but it's not enough to permanently discourage a carrier but for the most part this ship is just so fun to play i love playing it i, I can't stress that enough seriously like it, it is a joy if you're looking for a tier six battleship that plays well in operations and ranked and randoms and just anywhere in the game andrea doria pick one up today a very easy grind to get to that ship and you will not be disappointed with how she plays 
And the last ship on our battleship list is Ver Verbus Unitus. Or Verbus Unitus. I don't know German very well. Apologies there. I'm sure some of the comments will probably rip me a new one for not pronouncing it right. But this is an Austrian ship from when the austro hungarian Navy was a thing. And she actually plays very well. The guns on this thing are very strong. When angling very heavily, the armor does ver is very good at bouncing uh, rounds. The secondaries are good for getting close late to game. And I s very uh, strongly emphasize late game with this ship when it comes to getting really close. But for the most part, this is really good at just like smacking ships around. You can also use the HE reliably if everything is higher tier to you and bow on. So you don't have to worry about getting uh, screwed over by matchmaking with this ship. So overall... If you want a uh, a different and unique experience, Verbus Unitus is going to be probably one of the best uh, battleships, even at a tier 5 premium, that you should pick up and play. It is truly a joy to experience. So our next ships up are our carriers. And first up here is Ryujo. Ryujo is a great tier 6 carrier with good AP bombs, good torpedoes, it's good at really doing that fast damage. Your rockets pretty much only come out at the end of the match. And at the end of the day, if you want a carrier that's just phenomenal at doing a little bit of everything, then Ryujo is probably the ship to go with there. Next up, if you're looking to spend money on a good carrier, Kaga is a good one. It's very forgiving to play with a very large aircraft uh um, supply you get unlike most other Japanese uh, carriers you get HE bombs and you get uh, torpedo bombs which is really fun to play with I don't I only have a couple battles on my Kaga and I stripped most of her uh, modules off because I'm in the middle of kind of rebuilding my Kaga a little bit uh, to meet up with the current meta but the HE bombs on this thing are great the torps are great if you want to play carrier well or learn to play carrier well and you've already gotten past that initial hurdle of learning, Kaga is going to be a really fun uh, carrier for you to play. By extension, Lexington is in the same boat there. Lexington, I have the uh, Halloween skin on this ship, which I really love, especially the cool little plane looks on here. But Lexington is a very fun carrier to play. Comes with the American HE dive bombers. And it comes with torpedo bombers. I like running the HVARs on my Lexington instead of running the Tiny Tims. Because the HVARs give you more uh, spread area and it's easier to hit targets with them. And they're easier at setting fires, I noticed. So this is just a really fun ship to play. If you want something that really excels at taking out capital ships and being you know, not too terribly hard to play um, while playing with a division, this is a really fun carrier to play. On top of that, Pobeda is a fun one. This is only a ship I've practiced only in co-op. Same with Nakamob, which we'll get to in a minute. But uh, Pobeda is a good carrier due to the skip bombers, which allow you to pretty much strike from outside of range with um, with this uh, with this ship. So it's really fun to play that way. You get one uh, squadron. And once it strikes, it, it comes back, so you don't get multiple runs with it. But honestly, uh, the skip bombs are pretty fun because you can drop outside of uh, AA range with this ship. And the torpedoes are also really strong as well with doing lots of damage there. Um, the same goes for Nakamov. Nakamov is just a bigger version of the same thing. Uh, it's really good at tier 10. It's really good at a ranked right now. A lot of people are using it. And you see a lot of them at tier 10 for a lot more experienced and veteran carrier players. So if you're looking for a new line to challenge yourself with, uh, the tier eight and 10 are pretty good on the Russian carriers and they're a good fun experience if you're looking for something new to try. Uh, by extension is the French carrier Bjern at six. So the thing about Bjern is that she's actually really good with her aircraft when it comes to uh, the fighter consumable. So if you build for interceptors on Bjern, she actually does a really good job of taking down enemy uh, aircraft. It's like an anti-CV kind of ship. You also see this really cool animation where um, the servicing platform will raise up and you see all the servicing 
um, wagons here to service the aircraft. This is actually kind of just a really cool thing that, that happens on the ship. Um, it's got the fuel pumps and all that. But for the most part, uh, Bjorn has two different types of squadrons. You have AP bombers and you have HE skip bombers. So if you're looking to practice your dive bombing and your skip bombing, Bjorn is a good ship to kind of really work on that with. On top of that, with her good support capabilities, she's just really fun to play. And there's not there's not a situation where I don't think that Bjorn would be a good ship to pick. She's great in operations. She's great in random battles. And if you like denying the enemy carrier strikes, and if you like really supporting your team that way, then by all means, pick yourself up Bjorn. I have not yet really begun to embark on this ship outside of playing it in co-op, and I've played it in operations as well, but once I begin to get a little better at it and play it in random battles, I know for a fact I'm going to have a lot of fun with this ship. So anyway, that concludes the video um, of just ships that are going to be really fun this summer to play based on the meta and based what's um, coming up and what's going to be a good long-term play for you. So if you're interested in any of these ships or interested in more information on them, feel free to join my Discord. There's a link in the description. And feel free to uh, hit me up, say hello, and maybe ask some more questions about these ships if you have anything else you'd like to ask. Um, with that said, make sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon so you see my next video. Um, I know that there's a little bit more of a delay on the Nuremberg video, but that's fine. We're going to get that out relatively soon i'm still kind of once again polishing it so um until then captains take care and good luck on the high seas